This is Southern Cross News with Joe Palmer. Good evening, everyone. Those stories shortly. But first tonight to developing news. Tasmanian detectives are investigating the death of a seven-month-old baby who was being assessed by child safety services. Our reporter Jacqueline Robson joins us now. Good evening, Jacqueline. What do we know about this case? Well, Joe, there are very limited details at this point. What we do know is that the baby died last Tuesday at a Launceston home. Police say initial investigations indicate it died while being bathed. A state government statement released a short time ago confirmed child safety services had received a notification about the child more than a week prior to its death. A child health nurse had visited and an assessment was underway. The tragedy follows industrial action taken by workers in the child protection sector recently. Unions were warning about under-resourcing and the pressure it was putting on staff. Now, Joe, no charges have been laid at this time, but police have confirmed the seven-month-old seven death will be the subject of a coronial investigation. OK, thanks so much for that. Jacqueline Robson joining us there. A former Tasmanian funeral director found guilty of stealing more than $100,000 from clients has been sentenced to 18 months in jail. Financial victims wept after the sentence was handed down, claiming the penalty was inadequate. Our reporter Tom Johnson has more. Former funeral director Scott Allen Dickey had previously pleaded guilty to 30 counts of stealing and multiple charges of forgery. After taking over Kentish funerals in 2011, the court heard Mr Dickey siphoned more than $125,000 from customers, money which was meant to go into funeral trusts. In some cases, cremation services were not performed and signatures were forged. Today, in the Devonport Magistrates Court, the 40-year-old was sentenced to 18 months imprisonment. Magistrate Duncan Fairley said Mr Dickey breached the trust of his clients, causing considerable distress. A report from a psychologist found Mr Dickey suffered anxiety, an issue made worse by Kentish Funeral's financial woes. The magistrate took this into account, plus Mr Dickey's good character and early guilty plea. But a former worker says the outcome was unsatisfactory. I'm disgusted. I'm disgusted. It's the lowest of low acts. Um, he should rot in hell. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. Others affected by Mr Dickey's actions attended today's sentencing, most too distressed to talk on camera. Mr Dickey will be eligible for parole after serving nine months of his 18-month sentence. Tasmania Police has charged a 19-year-old Risdon Vale man with the alleged armed robbery of Glenorchy's Elwick Hotel in the early hours of yesterday morning. It's alleged the man entered the hotel around 3am before discharging a firearm at a wall and fleeing with cash. He's been charged with a string of offences including motor vehicle stealing and armed robbery. Fire crews have contained a blaze that threatened to engulf a unit block in the state's south this afternoon. Three heavy pumpers were called to the fire at Beanack Street, Chigwell, around 3.30, with the blaze believed to have begun in the roof space of one of the units. Crews had it all under control shortly after they arrived before any extensive damage could be done. The state government won't be lifting a moratorium on gas exploration in Tasmania with the commodity in short supply across eastern Australia. A ban on the controversial mining practice known as fracking is due to expire in the next term of government as Cabinet grapples with shortages of its own. Pressure to stem the country's evolving gas shortage. That task would obviously be made a lot easier were it not for the gas moratoriums that have been put in place by state governments around the country. Rising gas prices and fears of an impact on jobs, not enough to force a lift on Tasmania's moratorium on gas exploration, with the ban due to expire in the next term of government. We have a moratorium in place, we stand by that and uh, yeah, I'm certain uh, that uh, if necessary, we would consider extending that moratorium. We do uh, have doubts about whether or not there is any uh, deposits that would stack up 
economically and we, would, we don't want to see fracking here in Tasmania. But the industry body is calling for a change of heart. If we've got excess energy that can be sold to a market on the mainland where there's a shortage of supply, then wouldn't that be something that we could advantage ourselves with? There's no place for fracking in Tasmania. We don't need the gas. We've got a fantastic renewable energy resource here. The government grappling with a shortage of its own as a number of ministerial portfolios remain in limbo following the resignation of Matthew Groom. I think it points to the Premier having really limited choices or really difficult choices to make about how to fill Matthew Groom's spot and who to bring in to Cabinet. It's been days since that announcement and still no word from the Premier exactly when uh, the reshuffle will occur or exactly who will be coming into the Cabinet. The Hobart Lord Mayor today confirming she's considering a tilt for the seat of Denison at the next state election. That seat left empty by the outgoing minister. She's been very good for this city. She'd be very good for the Liberal Party and importantly for the state should she decide to stand. I think she'd be fantastic. A lot of people will either totally agree with me or totally disagree with me. But uh, one thing they'll be confident of is that I'm hard working and I'm never bland. Jacqueline Robson, Southern Cross News. The environmental challenges facing the Great Barrier Reef are being used as a lesson for Tasmania's tourism operators. Interstate authorities are sharing their experience of how tourism and the environment can coexist and work together. Lady Elliot Island on the southern end of the Great Barrier Reef is home to an eco-resort. It's a long way from Tasmania, but the lessons learnt here are being used as an example for our tourism operators. Tourism is a remarkable industry that's really sustainable. If we manage it correctly, it can go on and on and on. There's not many businesses like that on the planet. The managing director spoke at a tourism industry forum in Hobart today, with coral bleaching and climate change emerging as a big issue for the region. He spoke about how the resort is helping with solar panels and waste reduction measures. The land is the resource, it's what we love and it's what people want to experience. They want to come and, and feel these amazing places and if we don't look after them and protect them, we won't have them for the future. With Tasmania undergoing its own tourism boom, the industry's potential impact on the environment is also gaining attention. It's a really exciting time for tourism generally across Tasmania and, and certainly these operators, they're experiencing that on the ground. Rob Pennicott runs wilderness tours and says protecting the environment and keeping people happy is vital for business. Community interaction is important. It's also important to know that community knows how important tourism is for this state because it is sustainable if it's done well. Michael Breen, Southern Cross News. Plastic pollution continues to be a problem, with today's clean-up around the Tamer estuary finding bags of dangerous debris. Natural resource management staff and volunteers rolled up their sleeves as part of World Rivers Day. Among the beauty of the Tamer estuary, these bags of debris and waste. Everything from glass to cans and even lighters were scattered across the river's edge. Plastic, by far the most common item found. Every little log we looked at, there was a plastic bottle there and a lot of them were still full. So it seems to be a big problem. Um, we need to get rid of them, um, not put them into our waterways. Volunteer Emma says plastic pollution not only harms marine life, but also humans toxins and pesticides and all those nasties can actually attach to plastic. The smaller it gets, the more chance it has of being taken into the food chain and work its way back up again. Eventually, we're going to be eating the plastic that ends up in the, the waterway. The cleanup comes as part of World Rivers Day, which aims to highlight the value of our waterways. More than 160 plastic bottles were found here, among other items such as lids, water guns, shoes and tyres. Staff and volunteers say plastic continues to be a major issue here. We need to be reducing the amount of plastics that we're actually using in the first place. That reduces the amount that will end up in the environment. Breeds of Risk, Southern Cross News. A Tasmanian Rotary Club has youth unemployment in its sights. Students today given the chance to prove themselves in exchange for a job. More than 300 interviews were held by 33 potential employers. The Kings Meadows Rotary Club's idea originated from New York in a bid to tackle youth unemployment. Many students will have real interviews with real employers for current or potential real jobs. While some were offered a job on the spot, others walked away with lifelong skills. 
I've been offered a job at Toll doing vineyard picking, which I'm looking really forward to in the coming summer months. It's just a good chance to get more experience and hopefully a job for people who just find it too hard to or too scared to go in and hand in a resume. Organisers say they hope the idea will spread to the rest of Tasmania. Scientists are being challenged by big changes to Antarctic sea ice. They're reporting a record low of sea ice coverage, forcing a change of plans for expeditions setting off from Tasmania in the coming season. The Aurora Australis pushes through ice in a recent mission to the Deep South. For expeditions like this, the sea ice conditions are crucial. Ship navigation is really critical to us and finding uh, clear water in which to operate uh, our vessel. Uh, but also there are times when we want sea ice to undertake scientific activities. The Australian Antarctic Division says it may be changing its operations this summer with more use of helicopters in cargo transport. This is due to the latest data which shows the winter sea ice peaked at a record low. We see a massive increase in variability in the Antarctic, so um, a couple of years ago we recorded a record maximum sea ice extent. The big changes also present a challenge for tourist cruises in the region. Australia was forced to divert an expedition in 2013 when a Russian ship became lodged. Now of course we're always going to go to the assistance of people in need, um, however it does disrupt uh, what for us is a very tight and busy program and so seeking to avoid that uh, is what it's all about. Michael Breen, Southern Cross News. It's been a record-breaking year for Southern Cross Osterio's Give Me Five for Kids appeal. Triple M today handing over a cheque of more than $450,000 to the Royal Hobart Hospital. A total of $675,000 was raised across the state to help Tasmania's sick children. It means that we can provide services here that saves um, children and family from having to go into state for those things, both inpatient and outpatient. It's an amazing uh, contribution and really makes a huge difference to what we can offer. The campaign raised more than $2.5 million for communities across the country. A dozen of the state's primary schools have been given the chance to show off their creative skills as part of the My Education Challenge Me initiative, with students bringing their designs to life from Rube Goldberg machines to wind turbines. The critical and creative thinking. We know that students, these students, as they go into the world of work into the future, will go into a world of work that we don't know exactly what it will look like, but we want them to have those transferable skills. Around 100 students packed Hobart's T-Mag to unveil their special designs. Owners of Tasmania's award-winning Pine Garner Dairy say they've decided to hand over the reins. Taz Foods Group has entered into a business purchase agreement to buy the North East Company's assets for $1.5 million. John and Lyndall Healy have owned Pine Garner Dairy for 25 years. Now let's take a look at the day's business and finance with thanks to Tazplan, your local super fund. The share market has closed slightly lower as investors contemplate the ongoing war of words between US President Donald Trump and North Korea. The ASX 200 index has dropped by 12.7 points. A short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 79.39 US cents and 109.69 New Zealand cents. And several key Lauderdale players will miss the opening round of the 2018 TSL season. Robbie McManus, Max Cleverkamp, Thor Boscott and Josh McGuinness were all given a one-match suspension for incidences during the side's 87-point loss to North Launceston in Saturday's grand final at Utah Stadium. The match review panel concluded that the melees during the match did not require any further action, however. Lauderdale coach Darren Winter will front the TSL tribunal on Thursday night after he was reported for behaving in an abusive manner towards an umpire. Well, it's helped develop some of Tasmania's world-class athletes over the years. And today, Hobart's Guildford Young College carried on its proud tradition as it travelled north to contest all four winter sports state titles in the Sports Association of Tasmania Independent Schools Competition. Boasting one of the most impressive trophy cabinets of any school in the state, 2017 was another dominant year for the college. It's been a great year so far. We've, uh, we've won many awards uh, throughout the year with various sports and 
Today caps it off. Capping it all off, the college contested all four basketball and soccer independent school state titles in Launceston today, with the girls' soccer side making easy work of Scotch Oakburn 5 0. I think we're, we're fortunate, I guess, we get students from a, from a broad spectrum of schools come to us. And while they couldn't secure the clean sweep, returning south with just the one title after Scotch and St. Brendan Shaw were too good in the basketball and St. Pat's claimed bragging rights in the boys' soccer. The sporting powerhouse says they'll be back to seek revenge on their northern rivals next year. There always seems to be a north, north v south rivalry with uh, many things that happen in Tasmania, so I'm sure this tradition will continue. Tasmanian rower Georgia Nesbitt is through to the quadruple skulls final at the Sports World Championship. Rowing for Australia, Nesbitt comfortably held off Ukraine and France to take second place in the heat. The Netherlands claimed first place by three quarters of a length. The final runs on Saturday morning our time. Fellow Tasmanian Sarah Hoare is also through to the final in the women's four. Good evening, Hobart, Burnie and Devonport all 14 today. Launceston reached 15, not the highest though, 17 the top at Friendly Beaches, but generally speaking temperatures between 1 and 4 below average. A few showers over the west and south as well. St Helens and Bushy Park 15 degrees, Wynyard 14, Low Head, Grove, Strawn and the Islands 13. The onshore flow brought cloud to southern Victoria and Tasmania. Some patchy cloud drifted over the southeast areas of Queensland, a middle level cloud band is over the Bight and low convective clouds over WA. Closer in, that low convective cloud streamed over the state today from the southwest. Tomorrow, we have an area of low pressure to our northwest, extending a front over South Australia. Troughs sit over the mainland, with the main high off to the east. The winds will switch around to be north northeasterly late morning at 15 to 20 knots, a little lighter over the south and inland, but to 30 knots at times over the northwest. We have a frost warning for most parts to start us off tomorrow, and a strong wind warning from Low Rocky Point to Flinders Island. Hobart can expect a shower or two later in the day, 14 the top, 13 for Jeeveston with that same forecast, similar for Bothwell, a top of 12. Showers increasing for Launceston after a cold start, 14 the maximum, 13 for Devonport, 12 for Cressy after an early frost. For Burnie tomorrow, showers increasing, 13, 14 for Strawn, showers on King Island becoming windy for Curry and 15 degrees. St Helens a shower or two developing along with Swansea both on 15, 14 degrees for Orford. On Thursday, showers over the north, south and west, contracting to the west in the morning. A few showers on Friday, the west northwesterlies becoming fresh and gusty. And on Saturday, showers statewide, contracting to the west and south. Snow back on the hills to 600 metres. A shower or two in Perth tomorrow, along with Melbourne. Late rain for Canberra. Partly cloudy for the other centres, apart from the Territory, where the sun continues to blaze away. Well, that's all from the news team for now. Thanks so much for your company. I'll see you a little later with updates. Good night.